Go get him! <laughs> I skedaddled over to the finish line, and then something terrible happened. So Michael and I went to LA for the week. Leaving New York and going to California for a week during March is a recipe for an existential crisis. New York is dark brown and cold. LA is surprisingly green, warm and bright. We went because Michael was running the LA Marathon and I turned it into a 30th birthday extravaganza for him, not me. I'm not 30, <laughs> not even close. Two years ago when we moved from Brooklyn to Queens, we went outside on a sunny Saturday in November and noticed lots of people just running through our neighborhood. We realized that the New York City Marathon ran right through our neighborhood. I had never watched a marathon before. I didn't know what everybody was running from, but immediately started crying. Everyone was, the vibes were immaculate. Everyone was just cheering on people, trying to achieve their goals. Nobody knew each other, but everybody was cheering them on. They write their names on their shirts, so when they run past, you can be like, go Kevin, go. And I was like, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So we sit down in a pub and a few hours later, we see some runners who have finished the marathon come in and order some beers. And Michael says, that beer probably tastes really, really good. And I'm just like, they're probably gonna be really sore tomorrow. So they should be, they should be hydrating. Fast forward one year later, I tell Michael, you should get a hobby. He was working so hard. Whenever somebody's working hard, I always tell them to get a hobby. It sounds counterintuitive. Aaron, if I'm burnt out, I'm so tired. I can't add something more to my life. The thing is, is that you're not burnt out because you're tired. You're tired because you're burnt out. And you're burnt out because you feel so many unpleasant feelings throughout your day. There's like no joy in your day. And so if you add in a hobby, something that money is not tied to, and it literally doesn't matter if you suck at it, those two things are really, really important for a hobby, that will help at least just brighten your spirits. So I'm like, get a hobby. He ignores me. So I do what any girlfriend, wife, significant other who is correct would do. I buy him a full running outfit from Lululemon for Christmas. And he says, well, that's passive aggressive. And I say, it's not passive aggressive. There's nothing passive about it. It's just aggressive. January 1st, 2023, New Year's Day rolls around. And what does Michael do? He goes on a run. He goes, he goes on a little run. Next day goes on another run, buys the watch, buys the shoes, downloads Strava. He keeps running. I'm not running. I have asthma and my legs are three inches long, but excuses, excuses. All right, all right, maybe I'll do it. Michael bought his first pair of running shoes 14 months ago. He ran the Brooklyn Half Marathon in the rain. He ran the Baltimore Marathon in the rain. So I thought if we did the LA Marathon, maybe we could avoid rain. Trip is on, tickets booked. Michael decides he wants to try and run the marathon in less than three hours. For those of you who watching who were like me before the running was a thingy and had, like, had no idea when people posted their times on Instagram and you were like, I, I guess that's good, I don't know what that means. Only 5% of people who run marathons will ever run a marathon in less than three hours. This means he would have to run a sub seven minute mile for 26.2 miles straight. I can't run one mile in less than seven minutes, let alone 26 in a row. We get on the plane. Since we were flying there to, you know, do the marathon, you know, Michael was doing the running part, but I was doing everything else. I wanted to see if we could upgrade to get nicer seats on the airplane. And I, my friends, travel hacked too close to the sun. I found these JetBlue mint seats that were the exact same price as Premium Economy and American and United and all the other airlines. And I was like, this can't be real. This has to be a fluke. And I bought them and it, it was real. The seats were incredible. I had the best nap of my life on this flight. It was amazing. JetBlue, call me. We get to LA, we meet our friends. We go to Equinox. I've never been to Equinox. As I was changing the dressing room, I was like, think anybody in here follows me? No one in here follows you, Aaron. Just take off your clothes and put on your exercise clothes. It's all gonna be fine. Nope. Yep, somebody came up to me in the dressing room. It was actually amazing. They told me that uh, my advice helped them get a new fancy schmancy job. That made my whole day, my whole week, my whole year, my whole life. It's just, we got donuts. And although I wasn't technically training for a marathon, I was eating like I was training for a marathon. Why are you eating so weird? And since it was St. Patty's Day weekend, we needed to make sure to be playing as much bagpipes as physically possible. <laughs> I highly recommend the Red Hot Chili Pipers for this occasion. <laughs> the night before the marathon, I told Michael that if he really wants to take this marathon seriously, he needs to learn from the best. <laughs> On your left? On your left. <laughs> Michael's picking up his bed because he drools so much when he runs, they have to give him a bed. It's my joke. Was that funny? 
How do you feel about this being your last supper? Um, I can't wait to have alcohol. How do you feel, Michael, last supper? Very full. I'm forcing the carbs down. You're doing good. Mm -hmm. I skedaddled over to the finish line and then something terrible happened. I went over there around the two hours, 50 minutes mark to hopefully see Michael run past. And I started filming, not knowing when he was gonna cross. And minute after minute went by and three hours went by and no Michael. And so I was like, oh man, he's gonna be crushed. like. This is so sad. And then I waited for a few more minutes and a few minutes after the three hour mark, Michael ran across the finish line and we were like separated. So I had to go find him and it's marathon logistics is a whole thing. It's very complicated. Anyway, so I eventually find Michael, go up to him and I'm just like, it's okay, you know, you'll get it next time. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I know, I know, denial. Yeah, you're, it's okay, you know, it's it happens. And he's like, no, like, what are you talking about? I finished in like two hours and 56 minutes. And I'm like, it's okay, denial, it's okay. I know, like, turns out the clock was wrong. I mean, the clock was right, but not for him. He started a few minutes after the clock started running, so he actually did finish earlier than the, the clock was showing, um, and he did. He finished in less than three hours, so I was like, oh, well, that's a relief. Yep. How do you feel? Feel good. What was your time? 2.56. Day St. Patty's Day. It's very appropriate. <laughs> we got the Guinnesses for later. Yeah. Don't know if I can handle I one right now. I brought a Guinness medal. I haven't drank in like four months, so. <laughs> Next morning, we drive to Palm Springs. We drive to this fancy, fancy resort that I booked, and um, well. It was amazing. The resort was originally opened in like 1920 or 1940, depending on who you ask. And it has all this lore about it. Like, oh, it's built on a vortex. This was Al Pacino's like West Coast secret spot. Tunnels under the ground. This was a brothel at one point. Judy Garland went there like all the time. That's where Marilyn Monroe had her like affair with JFK. There's like all these stories and there's no way to verify if they're true or not, but I believe all of them. We show up and it's just like good vibes. I have never been somewhere with so many hot tubs in my life. Michael wanted me to improperly pour this to get views. <laughs> Ayurvedic food, which is like yogi food, like warm, plant-based, colorful, just like nutritious, good for you, fresh food. They have this yoga dome where you can go to like all these different classes and mindfulness meditation. And I went to a Kundalini class. And if you don't know what Kundalini is, just Google Kundalini, it's amazing. And then they have all these natural hot springs. So they're on top of this natural hot spring. And it's amazing, the tubs just naturally bring up hot, clean water, and then they overflow and filter out, and they go back into the earth every 24 hours, they filter through. And so it's entirely sustainable. And so we're sitting there in the hot springs, eating all this healthy food, going to yoga, and I'm just gonna live for 100 years, and that's that. Okay, I did have six like spicy hibiscus margaritas in one day, but like who's coming? I'm not. We went out to Joshua Tree to see the stars, because we hadn't seen a star in a while. We had our final dinner in Pioneer Town. Um. Which, glad I did it once, wouldn't do it again. There's no way to win. <laughs> we went to go see this giant rock, which has this crazy story. 
So if you will, this giant rock is one of the largest freestanding boulders in the world. Or it's really just a big rock in Joshua Tree that our bartender told us about. Hopefully it'll give us some special powers. And the Native Americans worshipped it. They thought it was sacred. In the 1930s, this guy named Frank Kritzer moved there and uh, made it his home. He um, used dynamite to dig a giant hole underneath the rock like the um, tortoises do, the desert tortoises. And he lived underneath the rock. And then, you know, it was the 1940s, World War II. Frank was a German guy who was hiding under a rock. He had antennas. And, you know, he accidentally blew himself up with dynamite, which could have been the case, but also uh, the U.S. military could have um, maybe had a hand in that. It's a conspiracy. Learn more about it. Lots of interesting podcast episodes. But then, to make things weirder, in the 1950s, this rock became a gathering place for UFO believers. Because in 1947, this guy named George Van Tassel leased the land, and he moved his wife and three kids to the giant rock, which is actually called Giant Rock, and he started hosting all of these events. He claimed that he could receive telepathic communication from aliens. And he built this other thing called the Integratron, which is a whole nother, whole nother topic. He basically invented a time machine. Anyway, so since then, it's been this meeting gathering spot on this vortex where you can communicate with aliens. Oh, and then in 2000, the rock just mysteriously split. I think the locals heard like a big bang or like there was an earthquake or something happened and the rock split. And everyone from the Native Americans to the UFO enthusiasts were like, this means something. And you know what? It probably does mean something. What it is? We don't know quite yet. Do you believe in aliens? Let me know in the comments. It was a great trip, and now I'm back in gloomy, dark New York, and it's just the way I like it. So now that Michael's completed his original goal of running a marathon in less than three hours, we were thinking of moving on to a new goal. Maybe run all of the six major world marathons? And travel all over the world so I can meet y'all? Okay, here's the thing. There are six world major marathons, and they are like the Olympics of running. Okay, I know running is like in the Olympics, but just, just go with it, okay? So we'll see if that's something on the horizon. If you think that it's something we should do, let me know down in the comments. <laughs> and if you have any questions about like running or getting into running or how to run a marathon, leave your questions down in the comments below and I will bully Michael into answering them. Just kidding, Michael would be more than happy to answer all of your questions. <laughs> That's it for today, folks. I hope you have a wonderful week. Remember, you got this and I'll see you next time.